think that's what, what we might get. But we shall see how they come out. There's a great youth system in, the, in Mexico right now. And, and a lot of these guys that are playing in this first team here have come through that system. So you're going to see some great things from them. We'll see how they measure up against St. Lucia today. And they're working quickly out of their own 22. Guerrero tearing through at number 13. He was the captain of the youth team. He's been the captain. I don't know if he's captain this year as well. No, he's... I give that to, that responsibility to Andres Rodriguez this time, but Guerrero, a very, very much a leader of this team. And there you go, he goes and dots his first one down. Probably the quickest try of the tournament so far. Yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I would say so. It's probably there, right? We have, yeah. a, we have quite, we had a fair few quickens, to be honest. Yesterday there was a lot of very quick tries, but that one was maybe the best. And Guerrero marching back. To so you and conversion uh, there on the kick. Steve Lewis, man. Yeah, Mexico is known for their, their skills. I think, you know, they, they can, for this tournament, they, they're up there for putting on a master class mm. with their basic skills on both sides of the spectrum, both men and women. Yeah. Very speedy, very organized. Very disciplined team as well. And they'll fight. They will, they'll give it their best every time. They allow it to bounce here. Big collision there. He felt that one. I yeah. felt that, and I'm 20 yeah. yards away. Yeah, for sure. But you see that kickoff. That uh, going back to the restarts. The restart contest is a. It's going to be a really game, a uh, pivotal point or pivotal play throughout this tournament. You saw Jamaica doing it, obviously in the previous game. Mexico is doing it. They're really getting those accurate high kicks and those runners chasing. <laughs> Keep an eye on Alejandro Chavez there, the number four in the red scrum cap. He's a real warrior for the Mexico team. He's been around for years. Coached the youth teams at one point as well. Phenomenal player. I've, I've seen him that guy having to get dragged off the field, bleeding and all kinds of things. Loves a battle. St. Lucia with the pudding this time. And Me Mexi Mexico wanting to go quickly. And there's Chavez, gets them underway. Looking to go out wide. And there's space over there. The big number, the big number 15. Oh, wow. Sanano, he's a danger man. I don't know what, what he's got more of, more beard or more tattoos. <laughs> Phenomenal man of a man. Well, he's got those two for sure, but he's certainly got the speed and pace. Wow, he is a big man. Yeah, feisty fella as well. Likes to... Likes the contact, but they put him on the wing. He's easily the tallest guy on their team, putting him out on the wing. It's hard to handle. Chavez for the kick. That's good. Great start so from you Mexico. And, uh, you and Steve. Yeah, it's a very strong start. Very strong start. Coming out, looking a bit like Jamaica. You take a look at them. Just legs for days look at that stride very gazelle like running elegant almost yeah. another challenge here st lucia nowhere near the ball big hits coming in mexico get to the 22. largo wanting to play it long and they go again same method the outside center pops it over the top one more time Have Sedano, a feeling, yeah, again. We'll be seeing him go all day. A lot. Yeah. But you see Mexico just so organized um, in their play. It's basic rugby, really. It's, you know, traveling in packs of three. They're getting to the breakdown. First, they're obviously recovering their kick. And just really spinning that ball with accuracy, hitting the, hitting the line at pace, and getting it into the speedster's hand. So you have Farid Senano. Keep an eye on him for the rest of this tournament. He's the danger man. That's what the target. target. He's the finisher. So kicker's looking over this side again. This time it's short. Nico Falcon, that name I remember for the under-19s tournament a few years ago. He's no longer a teenage boy, that's for sure. 
Jeez. They grow so fast. They do, it's seriously. The Mexico flag flying in the background. You're gonna get it's gonna get noisy here this weekend, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, with the homeboys of Mexico playing. They've managed to come away with this ball one more time. Nice little offload. Chavez takes it. He goes back inside. He's got two, three players around him. Ball gets loose. Guerrero's on his own. Just going fast enough to outpace St. Lucia's chasing defenders. Guerrero gets another one. Just more direct that time. And they're getting all those tries right under the post to set up the really easy conversion. St. Lucia just still looking asleep. They haven't they haven't quite adjusted maybe to the climate, to the uh, trip. You know, we got here yesterday, didn't have much time to prepare coming into this morning. I think St. Lucia's a team that's in the in the near future is going to do very well. I think that their administration's very organized, they're building so things and, uh, well. Um, they've got Lewis, talent, they've got speed for, for days. Um, just got to learn the game and, and develop a little bit more, but they're going on the right path. They've, I've seen their back-end infrastructure. Give them a couple of years, they'll be in a much much better position. But right now it's all Mexico. There he is, Sanano. Nice little pop inside. And there's another Mexico big boy, Martinez, this time dotting it down. They work quite well together, almost telepathic in their movement and passing. Chavez was following up as well. Wasn't needed. Yeah, Sanano can... He can probably get signed up for the professional volleyball team too. He had some real ups there, a nice bat down. But look at that again, they can go either side with the kick yep. and retrieval. No, it looks smooth, looks, looks very good so far for Mexico. And what, one other thing to add to St. Lucia, they have been fully accepted to world rugby now yeah, as, a, as a uh, nation. That was announced Lewis, just man. this week. So congratulations to St. Lucia on that. They are formally part of the organization. So they can be here and be proud and looking at again. Him. Yeah. That was Guerrero dotting over there. But we're at the half here. 35-0 Mex Mexico dominating this first half of, of rugby here. St. Lucia a little bit shell shocked out there with Wayne Pantor, the former Trinidad and Tobago national team player. Excellent coach, really doing great things in St. Lucia, developing the youth. I think they've uh, they made a good decision bringing him in a couple of years ago. He's done a great job so far on, on the youth, the men and the women's program. Creating another dynasty there. There's a good view of Sinano. Getting his liquids in during the half. We're going to be back in just a few seconds, guys. an M, Samano. Samano. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to it. Mexico made a few substitutions, so letting the bench get a run for this second half. They're in dominant force right now, 35-0, St. Lucia. Haven't had any answers so far. But massive hit coming in, double hits coming in from St. Lucia this time. Mexico keeping managing to hold on to the ball well. Looking for that top side. Another big hit from St. Lucia. Coming out with a different attitude this time. 
ah, that rook came from the side. He's never going to get away with that. So Mexico play quickly. St. Lucia still trying to get back. 3v1 over here. This is not going to bode well for St. Lucia. He slices them up himself. That's the number seven, Patricio Falcon, one of two brothers on the field today for Mexico. Yeah, St. Lucia certainly came out with a different attitude in the second half. Coming up, double teaming, hitting those tackles hard, but the lack of discipline led to that turnover. And then Falcon holding the ball in both hands, had a three on one. And that, again, it really four on one when you're holding the ball in both hands because that, that creates another attacker. Mm -hmm. And it's so deceptive, beautiful try to open up the second half. Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, and that, that St. Lucia fire coming out was great. If they just kept it up and kept it disciplined, they, they would have held them in place for a little while. But just coming around the side of the rooks, the mistake. Nice pickup. Great kick and pickup. Phenomenal stuff. Very smooth. Guerrero picking up at the back of the scrum, the back of the rook. Now they're working this way again. Goes to contact, gets dragged down at the 22. Rodriguez. Guerrero again, working for that top side now. Another big hit, but he's managed to squeeze through. Takes a third person to bring him down. They want it all the way over here. Falcon, Rodriguez, Rodriguez this time. Gutting it down, smooth stuff from Mexico, making it look easy. It looks like there's 20 Mexican players on the field right now, the way they're running rags around these St. Lucia boys, looking a little dejected at this point, and more substitutes, more fresh legs coming on from Mexico. Yeah, they keep rotating them in, and that's the way you play a tournament for two days, when you take into consideration the, the, the elements, the heat, the altitude, which they're very used to. But you want to keep these players fresh, in little spurts and intervals, get them out there, bring them in, get them out there, bring them in. Yeah, these athletes really are machines, especially this on the seven circuit. Short bursts of work and then rest and recovery. And a higher kick this time. St. Lou should take it, but he gets distracted. It goes backwards, though, so he's in good shape now. Support's coming. Mexico trying to play a bit of football. Well, that was the only alternative he had. He needed to just get that ball out. Mexico going to have an opportunity here to move it from the line. But their, pl their, pl their launching platform, their structure, it's just, it's flawless up to this point. And even with the, the heavy changes, it's right. staying the same. Yeah, Nothing's changed, yeah. even though the players were different people. They've got the exact same structure each time. And look at how they're going the top side again. Draws the man, passes the ball. And Rodriguez again, I think that's, yeah, that's maybe his third try. Yeah, Alberto, once again, that is his third. Yeah, but when you have a situation like that, right, it's every coach's dream and nightmare to have that sort of depth because obviously the dreamy part is, you know, he has, a, he has that depth and he can just substitute people in seamlessly. The nightmare is when it comes to selections. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm sure. And this is, this is the 14 that they've chosen for this tournament. There's another 14 behind that and another 14 right. behind that that are equally as good. I've, I've been watching these kids. A lot of these guys are on this field right now. Three, four years ago, they were playing under 18s rugby and they looked smooth back then. Yeah. Because they've been playing together for years. Yeah. You know, they get together here in the Olympic Committee Center of uh, Mexico City. Nice slap back there, but that, that's they've got that system in place, and now they've got it. They've got it set up in other cities, so they all get together in their cities individually, and then come together as a as a nation in the this uh, Mexico City itself. So it's just well coordinated, good team management. St. <sighs> Lucia with the ball for this line out. Yeah, they haven't had much possession at all this whole match. It's hard to defend for a full 14 minutes. It's yeah. no fun. Mm. And stolen by Mexico. They come away with it. Forward there, forward pass. So St. Lucia get another chance. I think that's probably what, two or three mistakes made by Mexico in this, in this game so far. 
And that's what you have to, that's the, that's the level that you have to play at in order to compete yeah. um, at the highest level, Minim right? Minimal mistakes. Minimal mistakes. <laughs> you got to you gotta have the discipline to minimize your penalties. But, you know, you go, you go against the Trinidad and Tobago, you go against the Jamaica, and three mistakes right. might cost you a game. That's right. So St. Lucia do come away with this one. He picks and goes himself. There's his support coming. Crash ball comes through. Support's a little slow. Ball went back. Knocked forward by Mexico. Yeah, and that just came from pure aggression on defense. Those are the, again, you know, when you get a knock on uh, as a defending team, not too shabby, especially when, you, you know, you're doing it in the course of being aggressive and putting pressure on the attack. Yeah, I think it just caught a hand as he was yeah. making contact. Uh, you have to applaud the referees also. I mean, the pace of this match, the pace at least, you know, for Mexico has been so frenetic and, and quick, right? But the referee has to be able to assess that on the fly, right? That that wasn't a, a deliberate knock forward, yeah. right? So the start so, pulling out yeah. the cards. Yeah, yeah. 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 So hats off. hats off to the ref for that ability. So, okay, interesting point here. You just saw the referee give a blue card. That is a new rule, a law, um, based around a, a suspected concussion. Um, I just found out about it just yesterday or two days ago. Someone mentioned it. They'll be using it and trialing it in this tournament. So the referees have a blue card for anyone that's suspected of a concussion. The player was getting up looking a little bit shaky and wanted to play on, and, and the referee can step in and say, nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this into my control and, and ask you to leave the field, and obviously... Perhaps the NFL should take a page from our playbook. Yeah, with that. absolutely. <laughs> so they get to you know substitute somebody in, and they can, that guy can come in if he come, if he clears his HIA. Nice little pass out the back there for Mexico scrum half. Guerrero's pointing directions. Nice inside ball there. Supports very quick for Mexico. And Guerrero again is involved in absolutely everything. Nice plucked it out of the sky. Number three, there. Galindo, another one of the youth players coming through the system. He can't be more than 20, 21 years old because he was in the youth system just a couple of years ago. But great work, Guerrero, Falcon, and then Galindo to make it look good. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's. One try after another, but you can see that the quick recycle is really helping them to score these tries quite fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the support over this near yeah. side at that rook was was yeah. very, very quick. Yeah. And that was that created a quick recycle. By the time the St. Lucia boys have realized, okay, we're set for the next phase, they've already gone past them. They're still turning around, and the ball's already out of the back of that rook. Yeah, it's great to see clinical stuff. So completely different team on the field right now from what started the beginning of this game. So lots of fresh legs on the field. A slightly deeper kick this time. Takes it well. Now St. Lisa got the ball in hand. Looking to work across. No support coming though, so Mexico's stolen that ball. Big step. Galindo again, I believe. Working towards this near side. Falcon. He's got space outside. The number eight, Patricio. Luke Martin. Dotting that down as the winger. St. Lucia there doing a bit of sideways running. It really puts you in a bad situation. You get isolated, especially against that fast defense, that fast line speed of Mexico and it makes the support line almost impossible to run efficiently and that's what led to that isolation of the St. Lucia player. Mexico just again doing it very technically isolating them turning the ball over and then spinning it back right. Nice work from Mexico great start for their weekend. And that's a great last try for them. 63-0 is the final score of Mexico. They've got to be happy with that. 
We're going to be back in just a few moments, guys. Yeah. Rose, Katie Will, sorry. And exciting action here. First match of the day for these two teams as Cayman Islands with Bermuda. What can you expect, Katie? Oh, there's going to be an exceptional amount of flair, got quite a bit of speed for both of these sides. They match up physically pretty well. It's going to be a great contest for the early on first rounds of these pool matches. And again, Cayman in the white and blue ships, kicking off from right to left. And Bermuda, Bahamas are in the black kits. Again, Bahamas up and coming, new faces, but look out for Kevin DeVoe. Been a standout in the tournament earlier this year in Bahamas. And again, we can expect great action, great physicality from both teams. And again, the nice high kickoff from all teams this tournament. Great leap. But advanced that came on there, just in the right party position and catching that kickoff. Yes, beautiful high restart. So difficult to handle. It's You can get lost in the sun very easily, Kelson. It's one of the features of playing here in the high desert in Mexico.